now it's going on 10, 15 minutes, and the crowd turned on me real hard. They were like, get the... Went from <laughs> ah, to double fingers <laughs> in the air. <laughs> get off the f- uh, this is in Madison. Uh, and, there, and there's a video of me going, I'm trying. I'm <laughs> trying. And I say and I quote, I go, I don't want to be up here either anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to the X-File Podcast. I'm your host, David Lynham, here with you today for a brand new episode. First things first, before we get started, make sure you like and subscribe. If this is your first time coming to our channel, make sure you leave a comment and get that algorithm cooking. I have a lot of guests in here today. I'm co-hosted today by Jeff Allen over here to my right, former bandmate. And of course, Bert's blessed us with his presence, but he has now seen the comments, how he's missed when he's not here. Yeah, and he's got a shirt on. I know, which is very disappointing. You'll hear about yeah. that in the comments, too. Uh, my good pal, Cassio Kid is here today. And one of our fellow comics we tour with, we have him here on the show today so we can he can tell us about what the inside of the Capitol looks like when he rated it. <laughs> <laughs> it's retired wrestler. <laughs> Bro, you're going you're gonna to blow my cover. <laughs> J-Dubs, everybody. And, um, of course, Jack Vale is in the house again today. And he brought along with him somebody very special. Mm, come on. His doppelganger right here. Yeah. Who is a legendary. I can't believe we got him in here. Former SNL cast member. Done so many specials. He's probably exhausted with comedy right now. But we have one of the <laughs> most legendary guys in the world right here in the studio with us. Yo, please make some noise for Jim Brewer. Yeah. Right. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which one's which. Uh, I know. Uh, I wonder what, which one the camera's going to cut to when I announce them. That's <laughs> Thank you for coming in here today, dude. You're you're welcome. It means the world to us that you're here, man. We love you. Well, thanks for inviting me, man. It was cool. It was, you know, I'm here to see Judas Priest tonight. Come on, man. In Huntsville. Yeah. And so, yeah. What am I doing all day? Let's, go, let's come out, visit you guys and hang out. You got Sully from Godsmack over there. <laughs> <laughs> That's a first. That's a first one. <laughs> yeah. You least, haven't heard that yet? Yeah, you're at least three uh, inches taller than yeah, Sully, right? Tall. <laughs> <laughs> pretty good. Yeah. Sorry, come I sure, on. I sure miss this place. <laughs> yeah, man. Welcome back, dude. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so Bert hadn't been here in a while, so this is his first time back. He's out on bit. tour. Godsmack. <laughs> 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 we were talking about you being out on tour with rock bands. How did you like that opposed to doing just traditional stand-up Oh, no, stuff? it was the greatest. Touring with Metallica was the greatest gig I ever had in my life. It was, I don't even know how to explain it. Because they was, didn't give you any parameters. They're like, just get no, out there. With, so what, what happened was they, so how the whole thing went down was um, James Hetfield reached out to me. I've known them a long time. Yeah. It's when I say James had, you know, he does like, hey, dudes, James, the guy know who it is. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's me. <laughs> yeah, it's James. <laughs> when I talk to you, <laughs> you're listening. You're listening. <laughs> listening. <laughs> oh, you out there being funny. Ooh. <laughs> what? No, 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 give me his off stage. Give me his off stage talk. Hey, dude. Oh, this is going, this going yeah. it's, it's very intimidating. Is it really? He's just very right in your eyes. Well, that's exciting. So what city were you in? Oh, yes. Been there. <laughs> well, he puts it on. But he's way. also a goof. Is he's he? also a goof. Yeah. So James text and he said, hey, man, would you um, ever think about touring with us? And so I, I was like... <sighs> <laughs> I just came on us. And now, now I'm not going to lie to you. My ego went straight to, I will murder <laughs> that crowd yeah. in front of a metallic. Yeah. And when I say murder, <laughs> I will murder that place like they didn't know what was going to hit it. <laughs> <laughs> That's your first thought. Oh, yeah. that, and then he, then he texts back, well, it's not stand-up comedy. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Oh, they're going to put you in a cage. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> like, what is, well, what does that mean? Yeah. What is, what is, so, and then he's like, a, 
he's like a buffalo. Then you don't hear from him because he's on tour and they're in Europe or whatever. And then uh, I said, like, "What do you think?" He's like, "I don't know, like a, a, a like a party type atmosphere, pushing cases." <laughs> <laughs> so I don't hear from them. And then out of nowhere, they all have their own little managers. By the way, do so they like, really? Yes, they all get their own little. Yeah. So <laughs> they, out of nowhere, I, his manager, who used to be part of their big group management, texts me while I was on the road. Hey, man, I want to talk to you about that thing James brought up to you a couple of months ago. Okay. Will you be at your house Sunday? Sure. Yeah. In New Jersey? Yes. So he goes, I'll be there Sunday. Okay. Like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so he comes over the house. He goes, you need to talk to your wife because this is 36 cities. And he opens up a laptop and he's like, and we're going to do two weeks on, two weeks on. We'll pay for the flights and this and that. And this thing, like, is this something you'd be into? <clears throat> oh, Yeah. He goes, all right, don't say nothing. We announce it tomorrow morning. He's going on Star and Rolling. <laughs> oh, yeah, my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crazy. Yeah. And I'm like, what? So what am I doing? He's like, we'll figure that out. <laughs> and You're so, booked. so with him, he's going. You know, we might play um, uh, cornhole on stage. Went, what? <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna have, you're gonna have Metallica fans drinking on the on the stage playing cornhole. <laughs> this is your idea of an opening. Like, what, have you discussed this with the band or no? Are y'all back on drugs? Right, <laughs> or just you? Just you on drugs, yeah. and the band's clean, but you're yeah. Okay, <laughs> all right, and you're managing. I'm just checking. <laughs> just want to make sure I know who's who. So <laughs> we we actually went back and forth with ideas and stuff, and I was creating this whole show where I'm videotaping, interviewing people. I'm trying to think what would I want as a material. Metallica fan, because I've seen, I'm a diehard Metallica fan. I've seen them open up for Ozzy and that was the beginning. And I've seen every single tour. And quite frankly, no matter who's opening, I'm not showing up for them. I, like, <laughs> right. I don't want to see them. I don't want right. to see them. Right, right. I tried Godsmack. Great badge. <laughs> I, my apologies. <laughs> <laughs> you, were, you were fantastic back then. But, um, back then. And then- it was like 15 minutes of this and then 10 minutes of that and 15 minutes. And I'm, and then finally I went, you know what? Oh, so then, then they're like, hey, we want to fly you to Finland to look at the production. <laughs> Just to oh, look at production? On my life. And I went, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so they fly me to like Finland or one of those countries. That you know, gorgeous hotel, first class. Would you like a steak? Would love a steak. <laughs> <laughs> Let me check out the wine list. Oh, I got a bed. <laughs> you have to act like you're used to this treatment, right? You have to act like you're <laughs> Is it breakfast time already? <laughs> sure, if you want to rub my toes. I didn't know we did this on Airlines. Are you acting like this is common for you? Like, I, yeah. I've been touring yeah, for yeah, years no, like I gotta this. be totally cool. Yeah, you gotta play it off like that. So yeah. now I land in wherever, in Finland, and I get there, and they show me the stage. I'm like, all right, well, where's where's James and them? They're like, oh, yeah, they come in later. And I'm like, so what, what do you, it's like, well, this is where you walk on. Again, I, I think I got it. It's a stage. <laughs> Is there stairs or a ramp? That's all you need. There no. were stairs. And yeah, I'm you're like, good. Okay. Um, you're walking through the stadium when right. I saw you, the arena. Yeah. And, so, they, uh, and there's no, so I, they're like, yeah, stay and watch the show. And I'm, I'm like, what? I don't. They show you how the lights stay work. Stay and watch the show. I'm not complaining, but I'm like, what am I doing? And then finally, the band is there. And, you know, like Lars wants to talk to us. All right, I went in and he's like, basically. Here we go. I love this. <laughs> so <laughs> what we want is like, you know, like a fan experience. <laughs> so it's like, no matter when we, and he said what I say, he's like, when we get bands, like we're, we want them to blow up and, but no one comes to see the band. It's like a bummer for the boss and them. And so basically we just, oh, this sounds just like <laughs> basically we just want like a fan experience thing. <laughs> okay. 
So, yep, let's get ready for the show. I'm like, what, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> so now I fly all the way back. Like, <laughs> <laughs> First class. Yeah. Get the other foot this time. <laughs> More wide. This is lovely. <laughs> come back and my wife's like, what happened? I'm like, I don't know. I, <laughs> I came away just as confused as I saw a stage. I could have looked online, but I ain't complaining. Right, I'm not right. complaining. So now I, I know Lars is more the creative outgoing guy. James is creative here with the with, with the music and Lars, but Lars is the outreach guy and he's like the real he's thinker. super creative and the thinker of the brain. He really is. Yeah. So I call up Lars like Lars, I'm I'm in San Francisco in June and this is like Two months before the tour starts, and I have no clue what you're going to be doing. No like. <laughs> clue, and I'm 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 already making videos, and I'm prepping for, you know, twenty thousand people and what they'd like, and maybe it's this and a little video of that. And I want old, vi- and I'm doing all this research, getting videos that no one's ever seen in Metallica. Like I don't. And then and it's in the round, right, which I'm has me very concerned. Sure, <laughs> sure. <laughs> because being in the round. It, you're dissecting a bomb every night because people are, your back is to 80% it's to percent of time, the time. Right. Your back is to somebody. And it's no different than when you would go to the circus and the lion tamer would come out with his big dopey hat, his bull whip. <laughs> and <laughs> you in the audience is party going, God, I hope that lion gets him. <laughs> 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 oh, get off that chair and get down. <laughs> I I knew that was going to be my situation at the Metallica show. Yeah, and uh, and um, so Lars goes, oh wow, I'm in town. I already knew he was in town. I I, I did my research. I knew when he was in town. Like, hey man, it'd be great to see you for fun. Oh, let's do that. So I. I purposely fly to San Francisco. I don't have anything going. I just want to sit with Lars go, what do you want me to do? What's going on? You just hope he doesn't ask while you're there. And it's just like a movie. You can't even make this up. So I go to his house and it's not his house. It's the, um, the worker's house, which yeah. is way nicer than probably any of our homes. <laughs> right, yeah. It overlooks the water. It's just beautiful. And you walk in there and she walks me up this you know, st- gorgeous staircase in a tower. And she goes, Lars will be with you in a minute. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so Lars comes up to the tower. He's like, dude, what's going on? And <laughs> How's he dressed when he walks up? <laughs> um, I, I honestly don't remember, but super casual, like t-shirt. But this is my favorite part. You know, we're... I'm in a couch where Jack is here and Lars just he sit he sits down he's like this. <laughs> <laughs> Balls hanging. <laughs> and he's like, so what exactly? Like what what are you doing in town? And I went, <laughs> you have to make up something now. <laughs> no, no. I said, I'm gonna be dead serious with you. <laughs> you did not. Uh, what am I what when you when you decided to have me, what what did you visualize? Because I'm really confused about this. <laughs> I'm so glad you're being honest with him. For I, I mean, I'm, gonna play, I'm too old to t- guess anymore. I'm, not, I'm in my 50s. I ain't got time for this. I've done, I've met everyone, done everything I wanted. Right. I, let's just get right to it. And he, he goes, listen, I already told you, no one likes, no one, no one likes coming early. It's a real bummer. He goes, um, just create, create a, you're very creative. He goes, this is what he said to me. And I was very like, wow. Okay. He goes, listen, you've known us for a long time. You've performed in front of us. You, you, you hosted a 30 year anniversary. He goes, you know what the crowd likes. He goes, I've seen you a million times. You read a crowd and you just go with the flow because just, I, I'm going to leave the creativity up to you. Oh, and this, yeah. this is where he, this is where it all changed. He said, I think you're trying to, um, because I showed him what the other guy showed me. He's like, dude, 15 minutes. He goes like this. He looks at it. He rolls it up. Oh, I love he it. And throws it. it. <laughs> and he goes, why are you dealing with, no, you talk to me. And he goes, here's the deal. Tell them stories. Tell them how you went to uh, Disney World with James. Tell them about the time James was in your house. And 
he slept in your daughter's bedroom while she was gone for town and right above him was Miley Cyrus and won't you tell me that story other, <laughs> one direction the one direction dude headfield he's so lucky i didn't take this picture he's sleeping in my he's sleeping in my one daughter's room you know sleeping on my house and Above him is the posters of the band One Direction and <laughs> and Miley Cyrus when she was on Disney or whatever it was. So it's like all that. And I'm like, if anyone can see I mean, this is the, the, the metal guy with One Direction and Miley Cyrus. Like, all of, Mouth with, open sleep. Right, right. With pink blanket. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, and Lars goes, here's the most important thing. Just tell stories. And he goes, um, and and whatever you're into, man, he goes, um, you don't have to be funny. I feel like you're trying to create something that has to be funny. You don't have to be funny. You just got to be entertaining and keep it moving. And that lifted off sure does. all the pressure. Yeah. Went, that opened oh. every door. Yeah. I said, oh, uh -huh. that that opens up a whole new window for yeah. me. Yep. And I just took it. I'm like, you know what? You're just, you're the fluffer, dude. You're the, <laughs> you're the MC. And I'm all right with that. You're the yeah. MC. You come in. And that once I really, the first show was. Um, That's what I wish I could have seen. It's that first one. The first show was rough, dude. <laughs> <laughs> really? The first one we were kicking at. First of all, we were on way too long. We started at six o'clock when the doors open. It was in Madison, Wisconsin. And um, it, it, we didn't know that the arena was a dry arena. Oh, right? wow. that's, that's oh. the one thing, which is fine. But when you're at 40, 50, 60 and your buzz is disappearing, you, you just yeah. want to get to the band. Yep. So we're fine. We're, 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 we're trying things out. Some things are failing horrendously, but here's where it got interesting. Um, I've, I've, the, 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 the manager of the, the, um, production manager. Yeah. He's like, uh, I said, listen, I see Metallica a billion times. When are they really going up? It says 915. They're not going up. When, when are they really going up? Yeah. <laughs> Don't like, Axl Rose my ass. When are yeah, they going up? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. They, we, we have curfews. They, they, they have to go up 915. And everyone is telling me that. And I went, all right, so 9.15, 9.14, you be done, and they want you on stage before they go on because they want everyone to see who you are, and they really want – they're big fans. They want me to right, be sure. part of their thing, yeah. right? I went, okay. <clears throat> Everything's great. I got them hopped. I'm like, ah. On this side, go, I don't know if they're ready. Let me just hear this side. Uh, these guys are a lot louder than you fairies. Do you guys think you're here for Bon Jovi? Boo. So I'm, I'm doing this for like three to five minutes. I go, and, and just like a movie, the guy on the ground is going like this. Stretch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's my closer. What do you mean, stretch? <laughs> stretch. Peak so he also, I also brought a guy that would DJ music. Yeah, I remember that. Okay, but even that started off as he came to my house. I've known him forever. I toured him, Joe Sib. Um, he... <laughs> he's on stage. First of all, he's, he can't read anything. So he's got readers. Sorry. <laughs> very on metal. Yeah. Very, very not metal as he's just like doing this on stage. Very I'm James sorry. in your daughter's room. If I'm like yeah, a hundred percent. They're progressives. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> now it's going on 10, 15 minutes and the crowd turned on me real hard. Uh -oh. They're like, get the, went from ah, to Double fingers <laughs> in the air. <laughs> Get off the fuck out. This is a Madison? Yes. Oh. oh and, I, and, there, and there's a video of me going, I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> I don't, and I, and I, I saw a nib under the bus. Yeah. <laughs> and I, and I say, and I quote, I go, I don't want to be up here either anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and, at, at one point, Joe Sib, he comes right. He's like, dude, I got to get the fuck out. I am I know. Play a song. What do you, I don't know what to do. So finally they go up. 
Sounds to me like you should have got the cornhole boards out. I know. Hey, what so, time was it when they finally came up? Uh, oh, God. They went up like 9.35, 9.40. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long time to be in a hot seat. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so, um, oh, geez. so this minutes. is the best. Their, their main manager, Peter Mensch, who's Q Prime. I mean, he's, he's the legend. Yeah. <sighs> he comes to my dressing room. And just, you know, he puts his arms up on the top doorway, you know, just showing his dominance. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Joe, Joe Sib already said he's quitting. He's like, dude, I'm quitting. I can't do this. I'm, I'm sorry. I can't do this. 36 more of these. Fuck and I, I laughed. I laughed. And I went, Joe, so, dude, we just need to change a few things. We're going to be fine. Um Peter Mensch comes over. He's like the main Metallica guy. And he goes, huh, I thought because you were really close friends and all, like they wouldn't, they wouldn't screw you. But <laughs> yeah, they, they fucked you pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> and he laughed and left. And <laughs> he left you confused again? <laughs> so the next day, I went to the production manager and I went, here's how it's going to go. Um, where do they stand before they go on stage? He's like, oh, they go in the jam room. Well, I'm standing outside the jam room. and With the camera behind you, right? Oh, 100%. And yeah. I don't go on stage until they look me in the face and say they're ready to go. I there don't take, go. I, I, you don't get to tell me that anymore. Nobody gets to. I put all my trust in all of you. You made me look bad. Nobody does that anymore. Nobody that's does it. Right. Yeah, that's and awesome. that's the way we did it from that show on. And I'm going to say by the third, fourth show, we had a machine. I was like, okay. Uh -huh. I was bringing people on stage. Um, we were doing um, uh, like little quiz shows. And then once I got them to do, um, before they came out, I started doing a, a, a sing-along where it was like five metal anthems and rock anthems. One was You Got Nothing Coming. One was Walk by Pantera, Run to the Hills, Highway to Hell. And, you know, the crowd would sing the part. And then I'd go, I think you're ready for Metallica. Let Hell me go. Yeah, dude. Let me go check on them and get their asses out here as soon as... Ah, so I, They're on your side yeah, now. Yeah. And, <laughs> and what I also then discovered was how do I, how do I bring this whole group together immediately and for them not to let, you know, how they start trusting me. So as soon as I walked in, I, I let them know, hey, okay, man, I'm like you. I don't want to be up here. We're all waiting for Metallica. I'm a, I am saw them in 1986 open for Ozzy. And then you could see half the crowd was like, is he just saying that? Or? <laughs> <laughs> you and, then, one of us. and then I would go into detail and all, and they'd be like, oh, dude, he's really a metallic dude. Okay. And then I start telling the stories of when I first met them. And they're like, oh, dude, this guy's, he knows James and like he hung out with them. And then, <laughs> and then I would go, find me. Now I'm only in my 50s. There has to be an older metal head. Everyone look around your section. Let's crown the oldest, coolest metal head in here tonight. <laughs> yeah. And then I'd have sections like, ah, 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 and hold on, section 305, I'll be right there. And I'm like, how old are you? 78. And then this section would be like, oh, are you booing them? <laughs> we have someone older. They have someone older. And then we go over there. And then, and then, we, and then it was f amazing. You were running your ass mm -hmm. off around that arena when I but saw I you. But I loved it. Yeah, but dude. I loved it. It was the greatest gig I ever had in my life. Greatest wow. gig ever. Had Good life. cardio. Great cardio. <laughs> and then cardio. we'd roll into a town and the whole town would be Metallica staff. So oh. we, and not only that, they never had, not to toot my horn, but they never had anyone like me. I, me and my buddy Joe Sib, within five to six weeks, hanging out with the techs and the, and the lighting, and none of them talk to each other. Not yeah. that they don't like each other, but they've been torn for years. Yeah. yeah. And we started going, hey, man, we're going to have a big dinner tonight. Everyone's invited. And then everyone would start mixing. Hey, man, we're going to have it. And then we started getting no people like, why don't we have a talent show? Dude, you're a you should be a comedian. You but should. Just the staff. Yes. And then we had a competition <laughs> and it was like a talent show. And whoever won that bus 
gets to eat whatever they want and all the other buses have to pay for their catering. You know? <laughs> oh, and that's it, bitching, dude. And that's dude, great. the coolest feeling in the world and we were playing wiffle ball. Like we, they were like, dude, I got to tell you, we never had, we never had this before. We, we, and we all, we all started getting to know each other. Like we've been together 30 freaking years yeah. and this was like the coolest thing ever. It was like, it was, it was a really it was a great time for That's me. Cool. And, and this is the thing, what I'll say about Lars. Every night he'd come up to me and go, is there anything right before they're going on stage? Like they're, they, they do their, they do their little circle. They do like a little prayer thing. And before they walk out, he'd walk up to you. He's like, is there anything that we can do to, to make your life easier or better at all? I'm like, no, I don't think so. He's like, you'll tell me, right? I'm like, yes, I'll tell you. Yeah. I mean, he really, really went out of his way. What? So you think it was he, he was the catalyst that sold you the rest of the band? No, no, James, James was. Okay. 100% James. So you said you tell the Everyone, story. Everyone, nobody, meeting. nobody, uh, we, <clears throat> when we get on the bus, I already knew like there was tension, like, we don't like this guy. <laughs> Oh, really? But we can't say nothing because he hangs out with James. <laughs> oh, you had to get rid of that shit quick. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had to put everyone like, hey, man, I was just, we're all together here. And like, uh, so it, once they realized, like, hey, man, I, we're just, we're all in this together. Yeah, man. But yeah, I got to be on the bus and I heard all the great stories. Like some of those guys were with them 30 years, 25 years. It was pretty wild. I know. I, when I went out with, the drummer for Guns N' Roses and tour managed him. Mm -hmm. He told me stories that he could never put in a book and he oh, could never no, say. Yeah. No. But they're the greatest. And I oh, eventually yeah. just started <laughs> recording them. I'd, he'd start talking and I'd lay my phone beside him. Right, right, right. Just for me to go back and listen to right. later. Right. It's amazing. Some yeah, of the stories yeah, yeah, they yeah, have. Yeah, they're yeah. just crazy. But they're not, it's backstage. Is, Lars has a uh, a running machine. Treadmill. Yeah. yeah, he has a treadmill <laughs> run, <laughs> running machine. <laughs> Whatever it is. It really technically matter. is a running machine. <laughs> it, is, it really is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then and Kirk has like a little yoga mat room. And you're like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is what's in your dressing room? This is 2020 Metallica. Yeah, what's yeah. in your dressing room, buddy? Yeah. Water, coffee. What that an old man. Much it. He's getting old, dude. That's so water so that's all I need. So you said, when did you, who did you meet first? Did you meet the whole band? Or I met Lars meet, first. You met Lars first. What Lars year was, was that? Lars was at Senate Live. That was when? Saturday Night Live? Yeah, this is like 96, maybe, 95, 96. And Lars, I was going to my, I was, I was walking to like wardrobe or something. And Lars was in a staircase, stairwell, confused. And I went, I went, dude. I goes, dude, what? I'm Lars. Well, I know who you are. <laughs> I go, what are you doing? He goes, I'm looking for the studio because I want to see this band playing SNL. And I went, come in here. I, I, you know, I'm like, cast my here. Use my room. And he's like, you, you know us? I'm like, dude, I've seen you a thousand times. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and that was the beginning of us starting to hang out. He was so down to earth, so normal, so cool. Um, I mean, one of my best times we, I had some of my best times hanging out with Lars hands down. Um, James is a different hang mm -hmm. Lars. We've moshed on the back of my tour bus. Like I slammed him to the, <laughs> like, would slam him in the couch. We were moshing for hours to system of a down in the back of my tour bus. He loved system of a down. I loved system of a down. His song was sugar. He's like, dude, you play sugar. Push, and you get this close to me and you get too close. To <laughs> get away. <from> me. <laughs> And so that's, that's, and then James, then we started hanging out as a, uh, his wife called like, Hey, uh, you want to come visit us? And at the time they had a place at Lake Tahoe and we go out there and my wife and I like, what do we say to like, I feel like this is weird. <laughs> yeah. It's not even a, just right out of the gate going to their house. It's hard to see them as normal, just average people. It's so bizarre. <laughs> yeah. So now we're sitting down at dinner. This is our first dinner with James and his wife. You know, and I go, so uh, what's everyone's, what? Loud, first concerts, right? So I go, James, what, what, why don't you start? And he goes, dude, um, who's Aerosmith? 
And he goes, and um, there was this crazy guy opening for him, running around like a maniac, and it was ACDC. When you saw ACDC and Aerosmith, he was like, yeah, it was my first concert. Like, wow. And then his wife was like, I saw Julio and Glacier. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you got to hear everything. <laughs> oh, my God. You got to hear all of them. Yeah, you she's asked. like, I love dancing. I'm sounding like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> And then this is, this is the side of James, like, <laughs> that's really funny, but you don't know it because you have such a dead serious look. And my wife goes, I don't remember. I think my first was heart, but I remember the loudest one was Bon Jovi. And James, mid meal, oh. drops his knife and fork oh, I'll on, the, you, don't on, the, on the plate. Because <laughs> blink, and he goes, get out. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, nah, just kidding. <laughs> and he goes, seriously, get out. <laughs> I was wondering your opinion on this, being a former <laughs> SNL cast member. What did you think about them having Gillis back to host? Uh, I I thought it was uh, I thought it was a great move. A because because Shane has always been hilarious. Yeah. Um, right after the SNL, right around then, he had the funniest fireman uh, sketch, and it it was it was so freaking brilliant and such a take on the world at that time and anyone that watched the news and anyone, it, it just mutilated CNN yeah. and how you think of Trump. And it was, it was, <laughs> it's a fireman. You got to look it up. Shane Gillis, yeah. it's the, the fireman sketch. Yeah. He saves a family. And, and before the end of the CNN interview, he's a racist, white supremacist, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Trump lover. Yeah. It was just brilliant. Yeah. So when they brought him back, I you know I don't watch Sunday. I don't watch TV but I I loved I don't know I I thought I thought it was smart yes. very smart yes uh, on the, for their behalf because they've lost yeah they've yep. lost everybody yeah they for sure I don't care what they say you bring on t t Justin Tim it doesn't matter what star you bring mm -hmm. I'm gonna say 75 80 percent of the country like yeah no you're dead to me yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. like you trash. No, you're dead to me. You're so one-sided. You fire normal. You're not McDonald's even funny. Like, you're just yeah. propaganda machine. Uh, and and so if that show, the fact that they don't poke fun at Biden and this administration, oh, they're, dis does. they're a disgrace to comedy. Funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're a disgrace to comedy. That is when we were on. It's everybody's favorite. Everybody. When, when I was on, it was nonstop Clinton and Monica Lewinsky. Yep. Nonstop. Every every open was Clinton, Monica Lewis. For you to have an administration like this <laughs> and never and never touch it, right? Senate Live has become a disgrace that they drop the ball horrendously. And I don't know, I don't know if that's the network. Yeah. I don't know if that's uh, whoever Boring it was, or whoever. But it was just horrible that mm. they they. Um, it's very it. sad. It, it just shows how they control us and what yeah. they really put out there. Yeah. I don't think yeah. a lot of people know how much of our Congress too has dual citizenship in another country. Like if, it, if, if our Congress had dual citizenship in Mexico or Italy or Germany, people would be like, Whoa, what are you talking about? But because they're in Israel, it really freaks people. It's like, you're not allowed to discuss it. Which yeah, really, if, it's very interesting. Like, why do you even have dual citizenship anywhere? Right. Yeah. So it always made me question news and all that. But you know, nothing, so I got a, I got a question for you. Nothing against them. It's just odd to me. How do you know this guy? Jack Vale. Come on. Was brought to me. Honest. Not brought to me. Was was that we had an agent at the time, and he really wanted to connect us. And he was very hot. He loved Jack. He's like, you guys are. Very like you would really like him, and I think you guys should meet um, Josh, right? Josh, did you? I don't remember his name, but yeah, yeah it's the it same was, agency. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think it was. Yeah, yeah it was, I think it was Josh. He doesn't even. I don't think he's even age anymore. Mm -hmm. And so we met in Huntington Beach, and yeah. we went to a little breakfast place. Yeah, and we just really connected more of a family, uh, moral, faith, values, and that was that really was the beginning of it all. Like I never knew people <clears throat> confused us yeah. <laughs> yeah. until after yeah. that. 
where peep I started getting recognized as him. <laughs> and it was close. It was close to the like the same time. It was around yes. the same time. Yeah. And uh when when you came to Huntington Beach, yeah. we we went downtown and you watched some of the like we filmed for a little while. I was doing some pranks that day. Yes. And you oh yeah, out, yeah, out yeah, a yeah. Bit. Yeah. And then, uh, and then you came back to my house, and oh, yeah. we took a we took some pictures and stuff, and we took this one picture of my wife Sherry with him. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> my mother, my mom died about three years ago, maybe something like that. But we sent her the picture of because people were already kind of confusing us sometimes. Yeah. And um, so here's Sherry and Jim together in front of our door at our house. And we just sent it to my mother. No explanation, nothing. Just, she sent it from her phone. She gets it. And all my mom says is, I don't like the face he's making in this picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We fooled her. Yeah. We fooled her. Yeah. And then we, 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 we connected a couple times. Um, he, he went, did a video with me. I did, I tried, did we did I end up doing like a video? No. We tried. We yeah. We tried to figure things out. I but feel like I, I feel like in New York one time you were yeah. like a little uncomfortable. Like I was doing my thing and <laughs> and we were filming a little bit and you were just like watching from the waist from this from like over here <laughs> and you just watching it. Uh, you were kind of you even said to me at one point like you were it was incredible that this is some public like it was a little uncomfortable, I feel yeah. like. I'm not, it's believe it or not, I'm not great. Like Jack's genius at what he does. I can't. I, well, we I, asked no, him this I, on the podcast. You don't it's get embarrassed? Like. I can't. I have a hard time messing with people. <laughs> you would think I'd be opposite. So you're if, not you, a, if I know you, I could totally mess with you. But like, <laughs> if I, if I don't know people, I get like a little weird. Like, I don't know. But I, but this guy's. Yeah, he didn't. He's a, a master damn, of disaster. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So no, you guys, it's, <laughs> no, it's a ma It's it's an incredible skill. So it's, you have a problem with public flatulence? I I guess so. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Not I really. It. Not really. I think it's all about taking the blame. If you're going to have to take the blame for it and right. it's a serious thing, then it changes things. But if it happens, an unexpected fart in the middle of a conversation is always funny. Always funny. Always funny. Yeah. But I I feel the same I feel the exact same way about what you do that's the thing getting up on stage and doing all of that and I'm sure you hear that all the time from people but it's really uh really true I when people started to walk up to me and one this one time the first time it I think this was the first time it happened I was in a in a uh bookstore or something like that and somebody came up they didn't want to make a big deal about it and they just kind of like scooted next to me <laughs> and at this point I you know Usually it's, are you the fart guy? Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, hey, Jack, could we get a picture? And this was the time I remember precisely that this guy was like, listen, I uh, I don't want to make a huge deal about this, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> freaking love goat boy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's when I knew it the first time. So, Wait, at, did you roll with it or did you? Uh, not the first time, but as it started right. to happen, <laughs> yes. then Same it gets Funny. It, then it gets fun to mess with people and sign the wrong things and, and stuff. So that's been fun. <laughs> I've signed Jack Vale. They're coming <laughs> up to you and saying you're the fart guy. Oh, yeah. I, I had it, I, I want to say like two months ago, I was in Publix in, in Florida. And this guy was like, oh, dude, the videos you make. I'm like, oh, and I tell us, oh, my God, thank you. Because, man, the fart one. I went, oh, oh. No, you think I'm Jack Vale? I'm not going to blow your cover. I'm not going to cover. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I get it. If you want, you want, it, so I'm not, I'm not, I'm Jim Brewer. Everyone thinks I'm Jack Vale, but Jack, I actually know Jack Vale. He's like, dude, it's okay. I, I promise you, I'm not going to blow your cover. And he would not, and then he saw me two hours later. He's like, Jack. Sorry, sorry. Jack. I'm like, all right. Yeah, I'm Jack Vale. <laughs> <laughs> the more you fight it, the more they yeah, think I'm I'm Jack Vale. You want to take a picture? You want to take a picture with Jack Vale? <laughs> you got to be real rude and be like, don't forget my name. It's Jack Vale. Yeah, don't forget my name, punk. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the world of celebrity where you're like, I have opened for Metallica. I've been on yeah. Saturday Night right. Live. Everyone, you're like, you're the fart guy, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. You have to think. How have I done nothing up to this point? Right. That's right. It was, it was really fun for me because when it first started happening, 
um, you know, I, I thought that you were hilarious on Saturday Night Live, but also did this comedy, the stand-up comedy. Incredible. That you, Jim was always my favorite stand-up comedian, period. Yeah. Because of the uh, energy level, the the natural ability to come through and be so animated and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, one time when I, I think we were in, I, I was in New York and you came uh, and picked me up from my hotel and we went to a place, Hell's Kitchen, somewhere. We had a dinner. Okay. Okay. I think I can remember okay. that. You think you could <laughs> you say so. I, <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm it was seared into, into my brain. Did we have like a chicken parmesan? I don't it was an Italian what. place. No. It was an Italian place. But the, the great, but you're calling you they have up. chicken. <laughs> I promise this really happened. Uh, no, he, picked me, up. <laughs> he <laughs> picked me up. Yeah. I jumped in the car and he asked me if I had ever been to Hell's Kitchen. I didn't know anything about New York. And he starts describing the place where we're going to go. Uh-huh. And he got, it was like watching a, a, a bit or something. And it, and it wasn't, but he was like, tell me all about what to expect and everything. Yeah. And he just goes, there's this, this little guy, little short guy. <laughs> he's going to agree. Like, he's telling me everything and the food and what it's going to be like. It was like a scene out of Goodfellas. <laughs> and I was like, I couldn't wait. I was so excited. And after we ate, uh, this guy, there was like hardly anybody in the restaurant, I think. But this guy was towards closing time, maybe. We got up. We started to walk towards the door. For whatever reason, I don't know why this happened. But the the guy, the owner, I guess, gets up. And he walks, starts walking over to the door before we get there. And I'm like, what the heck's going on? And he goes to the door and it looked like he was messing with the doorknob or something like that. And Jim just goes, this is where we get whacked. <laughs> <laughs> Serious as a heart attack? It says this it. all really happened. <laughs> yeah, it all happened. And the place was exactly, yeah. that's what it was. The, the picture that you yes. painted of the yeah. restaurant and yeah. the guy and the food and yeah. the experience was exactly the way it actually happened in real life. So I saw many of your, I saw several shows after that. Yeah. And, uh, and I always reflected back to that. It reminded me like, that's why you're so good at what you do is because you paint this picture that people can think about and they'll never forget it. Yeah. Yep. Well, thank you. Yeah, that's what I've always thought too is the you know, painting the picture. I'm just a street story, uh, storyteller kid. Dude, your I stories about your dude. dad before he passed were the yeah, best yeah, yeah. I've ever, of, of like sh- in the shower with him, like taking yeah. care of him. It was a little bit of therapy and a little bit of- Yeah, that's what it felt Also like. letting everyone else know, hey, when this comes down, here's a little go-to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this is you know, a, way to, a way to handle it all. But yeah. It's pretty brilliant. It is, yeah. and I've told and I've told J Dubs this story before, and I've told Cassio this story before. But the story I want you to tell today, and you've told it before, but I won't. I don't know how many people have heard it. Is your biggest bombing story that you had at? Uh, <laughs> oh, at a uh, long live paint. <laughs> is that, it's called long live paint. <laughs> it's, um, a lot of people ask me if it's true, and I say ninety percent is true. So. I worked at Sears. This is like 85, 86, right? Yeah. Out of, I'm high school, first year of college, maybe. Um, and I would always call other departments <laughs> as characters <laughs> nonstop. That was like, I went to the department store. What am I, $2 an hour? What am I doing? <laughs> and so it was all high school kids, everyone I know. So I'd call and I'd mess with people. There was, there was a fat dude that worked in toys. And um, I, because <laughs> if you called, and, if you called a department, they told you, I like, know the phone rings, you got to pick it up because you could be a supervisor and I could be chicken. So I'd always wait till he's really busy. And then I'd call him and I'd always make him look in the stock room for something. You know, like, could you go in the back and find a Wilson basketball? Because I was in there <laughs> two days ago and I don't want no damn rain check. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, so we, and I would do it. I remember doing it. <laughs> one time, you're right. And so the one time, I mean, one day, this is 80s, cab, whatever the big toy is at that time it was cabbage patch <laughs> so cabbage patch just new batch came out but we were on the border of an all black neighborhood and they didn't they didn't take that in account so everyone lined up 
outside of Sears, 80% were black Mm -hmm. and they were dying to get to the Cabbage Patch Kids. So (laughs) the doors open at 7 a.m. and there's two black Cabbage Patch dolls and they're gone in 10 seconds. (laughs) So (laughs) then a riot ensues. Fat fat Scott is in hell right now. And they're all all from like Jamaica. And they're like, what you mean you ain't got no black Cabbage Patch guys? I don't know. And he's got a line of them screaming. And that's like, can you just go in the back and see if you got that new walk scooter that I see in here? But ma'am, don't put me on holes. God damn it. I'm on it. So I would do that nonstop. <laughs> there was a, there was, there was a, <laughs> there was a chick in linens that I would call and I'd flirt with her like, I really like the dress you were wearing today. But I don't want to tell you what department I'm in because I'm nervous. <laughs> so I, I would leave her low mane and go, that was from me and I don't want to see you. I, I don't need my heart broken again. And so I would flirt with her for months and she had no clue she'd flirt with <laughs> You're and doing then, it for yourself, by the way. You don't have an audience, right? Yeah, yeah no. Uh, me and me maybe one other guy <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> Four, Four hours is a store. lot. Yeah. <laughs> in a paint department, I know nothing. I knew less than nothing about paint. Nothing about paint. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> They'd come in, say I'm repainting. I'm like, I don't know. You just sat and sustain it. Stain it. <laughs> that was your answer for everything. <laughs> Stain it. Stain the sheetrock walls. Stain it. I would talk them out of everything. Like, we're going to mix paint. Nah. I'll tell you right now, you can mix it, but once you mix it, you can't return it and you got to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Go to the wine. Like, yeah. Yeah, well, so, well, this oh, guy comes in. He's in hardware. He's probably in his 40s, which is an immediate red flag. <laughs> If you're in your 40s and you're working a department store and you're not you're not retired or a teenager you clearly some, something right, happened. Right, right, right. You made some bad calls. Like something <laughs> happened. We're, we're in the middle of divorce or we lo- like you're back home, whatever it is, you're, you're and I get it if you're making commission. He's in the non-commission hardware. So right. so so I I start busting his chat and I go in his department and he gets really snippy. He's like, you know, I said, Hey man, is there any, I'm Jim. I work in paint. He's like, I know who you are. You come in here. You look high all the time. He goes, you don't know anything about paint. <laughs> and he's, he goes in this whole thing. He's like, oh, you know, we're here to serve people. Do you understand that? Do you understand? Like you <laughs> everything we do is like to help people. And that generates more people. And I'm like, Oh, this guy really like do you do you want White Castle when I leave in ten minutes or not? Yeah. <laughs> I buy it for everyone. I'm not going to buy it for you. Um, and he goes, do me a favor, just stay in paint. Sorry, right, I got to I got to break this guy in. So <laughs> on <laughs> on my register is a newspaper, and the cover is Muammar Gaddafi of Libya with these missiles. And that was you know every couple of years is a new new guy trying to take out America, which now I realize was just our way saying, they're not going with our banking system, so we must call them a terrorist and murder them and then turn it into a trafficking hub. Trafficking hub. (laughs) But you didn't know that back then, right? (laughs) You might want to look up Libya. Anyway. (laughs) I do not need America. I do not need Britain or the big banks. All I need is, he's a terrorist. (laughs) Okay, sex trafficking hub. Thank you, Clintons. Anyway. So, at that time, the uh, owned news channels, uh, they painted Muammar Gaddafi and that's all you heard 24-7. It was on every newspaper. Yeah. Muammar Gaddafi, Muammar Gaddafi, Muammar Gaddafi, Muammar Gaddafi. So I called him. You know, he picks He's like, hey, this is Greg. Sears Hardware, Valley Stream, New York. How may I help you today? And I went, now, <laughs> I still see it like yesterday. He really, 
I can see him. He's down the, like, right. there's a walk path <laughs> that's only tops 40 feet. Right. Tops. Right. right. And I'm looking at him and I'm going, hello, this is Muma Gaddafi. <laughs> And he's going, who is this? <laughs> Muma Gaddafi of Libya. And I've sent six of my Libyan missiles to blow up the Sears hardware department. <laughs> you have 15 minutes to evacuate the craftsman tools. <laughs> oh my God. The hammers of the hardware and the people of the hardware. <laughs> I'm not even exaggerating. I'm not even exaggerating. And I said, do you remember this long lived paint? And I hung up. Paint? <laughs> <laughs> you gave away your location? <laughs> yes. And so paint was also, uh, our department uh, is where you went into the break room and the, the, the <laughs> so, so I went into to the break room and uh, I'm the only one working in paint that day and I'm, I leave the floor for like 15 minutes and then I come back I'm like Fat Scott's not there <laughs> where's Fat Scott man and there was this black chick that worked at when he came off the escalator it was paint and candy and I'd always flirt with the black chick and I'd go there and steal her popcorn and she'd be like, you better not take my popcorn, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I just love flirt when she was, and then where, she's not there. And I, and I stood there for like, I don't know, it seemed a good five, 10 minutes. And I realized there's like, there's no customers. Like what is, did we close? <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, and shit. then a guy comes out of the stock room. He's like, bro, oh my God, we got, we got to get out. What are you doing? We got one more. We got one more. He's on the walkie talkie. We got one more. We got to get out of here. So what, you know what's going on? He's like, the new guy in hardware, he's got a bomb threat. <laughs> what do you mean he got a bomb threat? <laughs> yeah, man, like, like it was a serious bomb threat. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. What, what, I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I called him. I, oh, I no. called him. I can't you fast up when you know oh, it's no. a big, uh, No. Oh, my gosh. Well, I got, I got, I, well, it's not a bomb threat. Like, is it, it's serious. See, is there something wrong with him? Like, is he- <laughs> yeah, it's I said, I, I, said I was Muammar Gaddafi. <laughs> <laughs> and I sent six Libyan missiles to hit Sears hardware. From paint. <laughs> I, I ended by saying long live paint. What are you talking about? <laughs> and he, I go, where is everyone? He's like, we evacuated. We evacuated? <laughs> no, <laughs> still <a> customer, <laughs> Evacuate. He's like, we're about to evacuate the mall. I'm like, the mall? You're evacuating the mall? <laughs> I guess I'm tired. <laughs> so <laughs> I went downstairs. Now, when I when I told this story, all the way up until the cops are true. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so I had to talk. They're all laughing. The higher the rank, the harder they laugh. Right. Like, oh, oh, God. <laughs> you should be a comedian. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You should be a comedian. I'm sure that can be. Really. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing here. Like, well, I am one day. <laughs> and then, <laughs> ah, sure, buddy. The story that I would tell on stage, or I think this is not happening, is where I told it. Um, I say the feds came. The feds did not come. Right. What really happened was they suspended me until I spoke to the district manager. Mm -hmm. So I had to go to Rockville Center in Long Island um, and meet the suit you know, I got a dangling cross earring, a denim jacket, painted Judas Priest, Defenders of the Faith in the back. I look like I'm high all the time. Right? <laughs> like I was right. But I, got my, but I got my chess king freaking tie on. And I, I walk in. He's like, tell me what happened that day. Now, I was done with all my paint work. <laughs> <laughs> totally done. Totally Can you done. Preface it with this. <laughs> All of it. Start me, the story. Let with me it. start off when I was done with paint. <laughs> All of it. I stocked everything. I put. I made everything look nice. <laughs> I like calling departments and keeping a light atmosphere. I, I called up hardware and I said. This is Mumako Duffy. I've sent six <laughs> Libyan missiles to hit the Sears hardware. I said, I even went, I did that multiple times. <laughs> multiple times, not just once. And I said, you have 15 minutes to evacuate. And I ended by saying, long the paint. And this guy, 
he just he did this for like a minute and he goes why don't you just sell more paint do less phone calls <laughs> 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 and I, was, so I, I don't What's lose my job and he goes no you can keep your job oh thank you so much I really enjoyed working there and I, I continued and then that guy quit because you know people would walk by hardware going <laughs> <laughs> Legendary. Oh, non-stop. Yeah. Hey, I heard Muma Gaddafi's coming today. It was, just, it was all high school kids and college kids my age, and we all hung out. We just tormented the, the, board, bo right? the bombing story I'm talking about is I wish I will say this. I wish that guy would come out of the woodwork and I, claim claim he had to hear the story. Right. He exists. I would, yeah. I, you know, if he's still alive, it'd be amazing yeah. if he's like, hey, man, it was me. So the I'll Freddie Armisen worked bro. in uh, Sears at that time. I've worked in Sears in the drapery department. <laughs> the The district manager punchline was actually pretty damn funny. It was too. really funny. I, I do got a question. <laughs> What's that? You think that guy ever watched Saturday Night Live? Like, fuck that guy. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. He's probably angry. <laughs> 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 Fucking goat boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about when you and Daniel Tosh and Dave Attell did Gator. Oh, that's Gator Grout. That's the poem story that I love. It's my favorite. Like, Is I that love the one you were just asking for? Yes. That's hilarious. But that's what's great, too. It's going to yeah. be hard to top but, that. But brother. now we know, know. about Fat know. Scott. <laughs> How did I think you were talking about Sears? Bombing. Like, what Missiles. Bomb. Oh, bomb. I mean, you yeah, said yeah, bombing. Biggest bombing story got, that you read. Wow. Okay. Yeah, dude, this... Guys, this is, let me preface this. This is the most legendary bombing story I've ever heard in my oh, entire life. Dude. It's going to be hard to beat Fat Scott and Toys. Yeah. I know it is going to be hard. He just no, killed I've, with this stuff. I've had two horrendous bombs. Horrendous. This is one of them. This is the first one. This was the most humbling experience of a lifetime. So I'm my ego's up there. You know, st NBC just came to me like, we're thinking about making a goat boy doll. Like, of course you are. Doll. <laughs> you won't get any of it, but I think it's pretty prestigious. <laughs> <laughs> the fat's got to be in our and everything. Thanks for creating stuff for us. Great. Now I know how Nabisco employees feel. <laughs> hey, we need a great campaign aid. Thanks. We made $50 billion. Who wants to go to Marco Island to say you're awesome? Okay. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I get asked to do it again. I believe it was Jay Moore at the time. He just finished... He just finished uh, the big hit with with Tom Cruise. Uh, Show me the money. What Jerry, Jerry McGuire. Jerry McGuire. Jerry McGuire. That's in the hat. Tell so, me hey, McGuire. He just finished Tell Me McGuire. <laughs> <laughs> it was right around that time, right? So Jay's doing movies, and um, I have to replace Jay Moore at Gator Growl. Gator so, Growl. Gator Growl. So at what's Gator Growl? And they're like, I sure. just want to tell you. This is very prestigious. We've had Bill Cosby here. I'm like, oh, I don't know how many people he roofied. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going down like we had Rob Williams, yeah. Billy Crystal. It's an honor to have someone like you, blah, blah, blah. The paycheck is money that was unheard of at that time for me. Right. Like I, people, I wasn't selling tickets because people didn't really know what Jim Brewer they tell, is that the if you if you watch Sunday Live, you're like, is that the guy? Yeah, yeah. There was no like Jim Brewer, so it's th yeah. that didn't exist. So I it was a lot of money. It was like it was like thirty thousand dollars. <laughs> oh, what year is this? There were stipulations. 80, no, no uh ninety eight, oh. ninety-nine. Tons. Wow. That's tons. Ninety-eight, ninety-nine, like thirty thousand dollars for twenty. <laughs> 20 minutes. It's oh, like shit. his new price he was thinking. He's like, this is what 20 I 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And all I can think about is like, Jay Moore makes pay <laughs> <laughs> What does he make for one hour? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know the improvs paid that much. <laughs> the improvs. Oh my God. So, um, <laughs> like, I am just, I got dollar bills in my eyes. And they go, now listen, um, absolutely no cursing. Oh. There's a lot of families out there. Um, this is a big gator growl. They start a week before. 
and they start camping. This is a huge ordeal. And who's on the lineup? Like the huh? who's on the lineup? Who was first? It was them. well, well, it was going to be it's Daniel Tosh before he had Tosh, but no one knows. Who no, Daniel yeah, is. at that point, yeah. nobody, nobody knows who he is. I don't know who he is. <laughs> and David Tell, who I know from the New York clubs, and he's filthy. Right, yeah. <laughs> he's That's hilarious, he right. but he's filthy. Right? <laughs> so, and they go listen. You need to sign this. And we get there like, you need to sign right here. Absolutely no smoking. Don't mention homosexuality. Don't trash the church. Don't, uh, you know, don't curse. And all I can think of, and if you do, you're not getting your paycheck. Oh, yeah. Mm. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm on television. So <laughs> I'm live television. I think I got this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you know, but they're making a goat boy call. <laughs> <laughs> I can get you on a call. I'm not getting anything, but <laughs> you'll see them at Walmart. I'm right up there at Belushi and Murphy just saying. <laughs> <laughs> not too many people getting dogs. Not getting but. anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh my God. and all I can think about, and David tells, looking him right in the face, and I'm watching Dave sign. Like, there's no way he's going to pull this off. There's no way. He's going to be a miracle. He's going to be horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to watch David. <laughs> I've never seen him bomb. This is going to be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so right before we're about to go on stage again, I just want to reiterate, just so you know, no this, no smoking, no homosexuality, don't make fun of the church and the kids and bang and bang and no cursing. No problem. <laughs> Daniel Tosh goes on. No one, no one pays attention to him. No one knows who. He, and this is another thing. You're like, you're, you're three levels up. You're, you're at a football stadium and every seat is packed. The floor is packed. They got marching man. Okay, now we go to the comedy show. <laughs> Daniel, Daniel Tosh going to do 10 minutes. And we're at the end zone, but we're like three stories high. We're way up there. I'm, I'm freaked out by the heights, right? You go to the end of the stage, you're dropping three stories. You're breaking a leg. You come yeah. off that thing. <laughs> David Tell is walking up. And I'm like, this is going to, I got to watch this. This is going to be hilarious. And he, as soon as he gets on stage, he lights a cigarette. And they're like, what? What's he doing? <laughs> and he goes, let's get this out of the way. <laughs> Cop, jism, anal, blood. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I put my cock in the fishbowl just to let him know who's bought. Jumping out of the stands. Mosh pits are breaking out. Mosh, they're running around hitting each other. They're they're taking students and launching them, and it's one after the, the other. Then he's like, you know, what's up with eggnog? If you ask me, it's elf come. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Dean, tonight's for the students. <laughs> oh, mosh pits, explosives. <laughs> and he comes off the stage, walks right by me, he goes, Guess I'm not getting paid. <laughs> That's why he's such a gangster, dude. He's so wow. Gangster. And I just went, you got to go up now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> I live in New York. Anyway. There's the pigeons there. <laughs> the pigeons. Aren't they funny the way they walk? And bro, it wasn't like a couple people. One whole section started. We're like, we don't like this guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boo. 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 
<laughs> and when one whole section starts booing, <laughs> it fucking <laughs> wave starts. <laughs> 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 and then there were some brewers like, no, 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 give him a chance. <laughs> I suck, Scott. And I just had to sit there for 20 minutes going, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 80,000 <laughs> people <laughs> screaming. <laughs> it was the most shameful 30 grand ever collected. In <laughs> but you got Brutal. that check, huh? Oh, I took that check. I went home without that check. Me and my Y'all wife are spent more. it and then sent. You really? should have said, give me a tails check, too. Yeah, bro. they should. Uh, I'd love just to have to deal paid. with that. Hey, you know what? It doesn't matter. You're like, every article is like, Jim Burr is class. It doesn't matter. 30,000 people like David Thousand King. Yeah. His show came yeah. out like, Brewer bombed her race. <laughs> I wouldn't go near Gainesville for 20 years. <laughs> That's how there's still there's memorials there. Oh Jim God. Brewer performed here at Gator Ground. <laughs> there's still people with burns on them. It was, it was bad. It was really bad. <laughs> Jim, thank you so much for telling us. Yeah, no, you're welcome. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that harsh reality back in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that's not a bit of yours on stage because it would murder. Yeah, dude. you know, it's so relatable too because in your early, we, I saw you do stand up one time in Stockton, no, Sacramento, maybe California. Yeah. I think. And uh, you were at a place, comedy club called the Punchline or yeah. something like that. And uh, it was, I was embarrassed to be with my wife out on a date. It was pretty raunchy that night. Me? A long time ago. I'm talking like years ago. This and was like no, it was before long. 2010. Yes, correct. Okay, because yes, yes. 2008, I stopped cursing. I know. Yeah. Not everybody could do what you did, which was successfully transition from that type yep. of humor to family humor, and it stays mm. exactly just as funny as it always was, and you're talking about all these other things. Not everybody could do that. In fact, right. not very many people can. Yeah. Well, they've said- I went full-blown was- clean- 2008. Who was that that told us? Target. Uh, yeah. Titus, Christopher Titus oh, yeah. was here. He uh, he told us that if if you have to use cursing as a punchline, then you're doing it wrong. Well, what I learned was I started watching st- the online started getting big. Like at that time, Brian Regan, yeah, my favorite, became dude. huge hmm. because of the internet. Yeah, like we all knew him as brilliant and hilarious, but he wasn't big. But all of a sudden the internet and he was clean yeah, and he was hilarious. And then he spread like wildfire. And then I started looking at my sets. Like, you know, you know, and shit. And you know, like, Oh my, I'm not even like, what am I doing? I'm not even like, I'm not saying jokes or not. I'm just, so I love I love all comedy. Like I love yeah, I yeah, love yeah, yeah. Like Absolutely. I don't care. Yeah. You know, it's, I don't yeah. sit at home. I curse like a, tr- a truck driver when I'm <laughs> angry and whatever. But um, <laughs> yeah, from that moment, from 2008 on, I I saw myself, and I really didn't like it. And then I was at we would do men's night out, like fathers, and and we'd go, go to this little place in town, and there was a woman that came up to me. She's like, "Oh, you're the you're the guy, the TV guy, right?" in town well i'm just jim she was yeah you're like you're really like you're blue and like you, you're blue you do the drugs and you and I'm like what <laughs> what are you talking about so everyone knows i got like i couldn't bring anyone to see your show and i'm like who to like what are you talking about what, 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 what? she was like, i don't know isn't that kind of known and that it pissed me off so much but it also made me realize how many other people think this way yeah and don't tell you and why don't right. why do they think that way? I'm like, you know what? I got to start talking about who I really am. And that that was 2008. I started like, all right, yeah. from now on, I'm just going to talk about, I'm going to find the funny in my real life. And that was, I mean, I already talked about it. It just wasn't, I didn't take the time to find funny. And honestly, there was this radio station, Opie and Anthony. Oh, yeah. I learned a lot from them. Um, and they were really encouraging with the storytelling. But what I loved about them is- they would push the limit, but they would make you, you visualize what was going on, however you visualized it. That's why, that's why it was so funny, hmm. which is what I liked. I like to, here, I will 
animate it and create it, and you could take it from there and wander in any direction you yeah. want. I can't control that. And hmm. that, I love that stuff. I, I, I love painting the picture. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, look, this is, uh, I'm hurting uh, from, <laughs> I can't believe it's already been an hour uh, and we're about to wrap. I just want to say uh, thank you from all of us. I know everybody's almost said their, their fanboy story. Um, just, all huge fans. We're thankful you're here. We're going to do a segment here uh, before well, I, we get out of here. I got to say, Jack, if it wasn't for Jack, I probably wouldn't have came. Yeah. And so Thank it's all you, Jack. Jack Vale. Jack Vale, who I I trust, great human, one of the greatest human beings I've ever met in my life. And he he reached out to me. He's like, hey, man, I just did this little podcast. I, he didn't say little podcast. He said, <laughs> it's okay. he said I did this podcast. Make sure you talk to Charlie. He's a really good guy. <laughs> 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 He's the other guy. There, right? <laughs> <laughs> but Jack was like, these guys, you, I think you'd really like them. And we brought this up. And I'm like, well, you know, I am all right, dude, I'm playing there. Yeah, I'll look into it. So it was, it's, Jack was the one that was like, hey, man, you should do this. And I, I don't, you know, I'll go on Rogan. I'll go on, I'll go on, uh, I, I've been on Theo. I don't do a whole lot. Yeah. So uh, this was a great atmosphere. So thanks for thank allowing you. that. And thanks. Thank you, Jack. Awesome. Thanks, for uh, thank suggesting you. to come on here. You guys are fun. Yeah. To, there's definitely going to be more hangs. Oh, yeah. 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 Thank you. You've heard yeah. a million of them, but I just want to I, I just want to say mine. When I started thinking about doing comedy in high school and everybody doing the you should do comedy deal, and I didn't know the science of it. And, I, I you know, I, I imagine anybody who does any kind of comedy, you don't realize you're getting influenced by comedians you're watching until later. Yeah. And... Uh, I didn't realize I was gravitating towards the storytellers and the animation. And so I started, I, me and David have a huge connection over Brian Regan as uh, one of the goats. And so Farley, of course, I, I get compared, you know, I, everybody sure. goes, clearly you're imitating Farley. But you as well. And when I, I started taking improv class, one of the things that hit was, you know, take it to 10. They tell you everything you do, just immediately go to 10. That's always funnier. And I, I will say you are the master of that because oh, of yeah. Uh, I, I didn't realize it till that moment. I went, yeah. Everybody I know is animated that I like, and immediately goes to ten. And I even thought, man, if I'm just my best compliment from another comic was a guy named Mike Spinberg. Shout out Mike somewhere. I got through, and as I'm walking off stage, he goes, "Dude, I don't know if you're funny or not, but you are the Ronnie James Dio of comedy. You're just loud, <laughs> and people go." God dang, he's loud. I just got to pay attention. I don't Where know. Where to the yet. club? Will it be funny, funny tonight? Yeah, he's like, I don't know what you're saying sometimes. Your voice is awful, but I just paid attention. I was like, I'm going to take it because that's all I wanted to do. It's just, at least if I can be animated and go, here's the show over here. So just thanks again, man. You're welcome. Thanks no, again. You no know, one saw, someone taught me, I don't remember who. I think honestly, I think it was like Steve Harvey back in like 1988 or 89 and, and many others along the way. Uh, Chappelle was helpful, but the storytelling is like music. If you're up here, the old time, eventually they're like, <laughs> yeah, it's a tone. So I learned to re you got to re you reel them in. Mm hmm. Then punch him, mm -hmm. and then give him a little something, and then and then oh, so you take <laughs> yeah. him on a you take him on a roller coaster ride. And I think it was Chappelle was like, man, when they're quiet, when it's silence, Jim, they listen. that means they're really listening. Yeah. Wow. wow. Interesting. Wow. So yeah, he was so yeah. I love great storytelling. Yeah, me love too. It. Yeah, love it. All right, well, before we get out, we got some calls. Uh, we do this uh, as much as we can. 412 for advice. You can call in, oh, leave boy. us a question, and for some reason you trust us with answering that. 412, <laughs> the number four advice. We got some calls. Are we ready back there? Uh, yes, this is Wilmo from Coleman, Alabama. Wilmo. I was just wondering if Jim could give any advice on how to get my two-year-old and four-year-old girls to brush their teeth. I'm pretty sure that this thing should have come with instructions like a bear trap, and I don't know if there's a magic button on the side or if I just need to use a crowbar. Uh, anyway, if you could give me some advice on that, I'd appreciate it. Thanks. Bye. Okay. 
<laughs> there you go. Well, <laughs> <laughs> your girls voluntarily brush their teeth, right? <laughs> well, yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> I'm also a rabbit hole guy. Where now it's like fluoride is the worst <laughs> exactly. thing in the world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sucks exactly. your brain to yeah. death. You what? Your <laughs> Stop brushing teeth now. <laughs> yeah. Let's figure it out. <laughs> Just use fluoride and eat grass or something. <laughs> oh, no more. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, if I had to start all over, even with my teeth, the most important thing, stop with sugar. Yeah. You're going to save tens of thousands of, if you don't look at it as a health thing, look at it as medical bills. A hundred percent, all the sugar you're giving your kids, you're going to get cavities. You're going to have to replace all those teeth. You're going to have to, you're going to have... <clears throat> Concentrate more on, and I wish I knew this younger, and they should really pass it. It's just yeah, yeah, f- floor. Floss. Floss. Thank you. I couldn't <laughs> say it. <laughs> Fuh. <laughs> Flossing and uh, a little rinsing. I, I, I'll take that any day over the week over it. Don't stress over your kid not brushing his teeth. Just make sure they don't. Stop giving them pop tarts and and cereal in the morning. <laughs> you got to. Uh, where it's forty grams of sugar. Oof. Uh, that's the only thing you have to worry about with your kids. Don't worry about them. Cancel my teeth. order from Kroger and tell you. <laughs> <laughs> no that's more pop tarts. Yeah. All right, one that's more, and then we're wrapped. Yeah. Hey, this is uh, this is Greg uh, up here in Kentucky. Um, I just want to know if it's normal. Usually when I'm banging a chick, my left nut kind of disappears for a minute. Mm. And, you know, I have to like, hey, hang on a second. And I got to like, you know, like, oh, shit, where did my left nut go? Is that, I just want to know, is that like a normal thing? Um, Because, you know, kind of gives me a boner kill sometimes. And I just kind of want to know if that's normal. Uh, Again, Scrag up in Kentucky. I'd like some advice on that or, you know, hey. Give me a shout out if that's normal or not. Thanks a lot. I like how he doubled down on the name to make sure we know who to tell. Uh, well, here's the deal. Dude, I'm married 30 years. I can't relate to anything that guy's talking about. And if, you're tr- if you're still trying to, if you're, quote, banging chicks, which I highly doubt at the sight, with the sound of his age, he's lucky if he's folding two corners of a pillow together and pretending it's something. He's full of donkey dust. There's no female in that guy's life. Anyone that would call and leave a message like that is already, is your boat. Here, this is your favorite sound. <laughs> That's a shit. It sailed. Go back to Sears Hardware. There it is. I got a it's bomb a over here. for you. If that's the if that's what you're concentrating, Greg, you all day to think of something to try to be funny, and this is what you're coming out of the gate with. I can only imagine what the next conversation would be like. No chick is hanging out with you. I bet he uses fluoride. Oh, he's a fluoride guy all the way. <laughs> That'll help. That'll help with the job. Oh Lord! So what a day. Oh so my gosh. Jim, so tell everybody where they can find yeah, you, man. man. Oh, just go on jimbrewer.com. Yeah. B R E U E R dot com and got some Alabama dates coming. You'll find yeah, yeah I'm excited about the Alabama date. Mm-hmm. Um I think it's September twenty first, maybe. It is. Uh, September Tulsa Tip One. Look at that. I don't see Gainesville. <laughs> Still terrified of that no, state. I ain't going near that. I'll do Jacksonville. I ain't near no damn games. Um, That's great. Yeah, when is it? Good Lord. It's, it's, it's September 21st. It is, wow. September 21st, right in downtown Birmingham. Damn, I'm doing a lot of dates. You sure mm. are, boy. It's time to, you're, this is like your tour goodbye. It really <laughs> is. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to be touring like this in the next two years or so. Yeah. This is it. I enjoy what I'm doing. I think I told you guys, I said everything I had to say yeah. the last three years about mask, vaccines, government, uh, what they called the pandemic. I called it the takeover, right. the global human uh, takeover <laughs> enslavement. Um, if, if, you know, <laughs> Come on, keep going. Keep going. Why not? Here we go. You know, Republican, Democrat, even that at this point, it's like it's I, I've said it from the it's all professional wrestling. Yeah, it is. It it's really all, is. They're both our, our entire country government, we've been played for a mm-hmm. very long time. 
Uh, so I feel like I said everything I, I kind of have to say. You've held everybody accountable. I, I hold everyone accountable. It's, um, it's, I, it's the same mastery circus that goes on and on. They, 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 so finding the funny, I still find the funny, yeah. but, uh, I mean, I, I, this is my last hurrah for a walk because I am leaving the country in October and September. I mean, we're only in May. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we have our protest. We've had, <laughs> let's see what else. Uh, there's a ship that went into the big uh, bridge. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, the electricity went, it's not a big deal. <laughs> it's a big military area. I wouldn't worry about uh, Oh my God. Did another train derail and just toxic fluid in the, Listen, stop getting excited. You guys stop watching TikTok. Oh, by the way, we're going to get rid of TikTok. In a um, <laughs> I love this man so much. Yeah. yeah. If oh, anyone man. still believes that's the real Joe Biden, then you're not going to join my show. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. No, it's good. It's, it's good to tell them now before they come out there. I tell them now because, you know, the first three minutes you're up and walking like, this is not what I expect. <laughs> <laughs> They're expecting 10 I minutes. I thought he do go boy for an hour yeah. and a half and talking about a seven line. This is the Jim Brewer get off my lawn door. <laughs> <laughs> You're stupid. I'm not door. Case closed. <laughs> Jack, uh, thanks for coming back. Yeah, down thanks again. for having yeah, me. Jack, this is a lot of thank fun. You, brother. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Jack Vale, yeah. we'll see yeah. you in uh, Nashville, I guess, or now Vegas. Yep, Vegas, Las Vegas. I hope that soon. goes through. Yeah. That's going to be awesome. Thank you, buddy. I'll see you out Thank there. Thank you. I'll and see you soon, too. Every one of us is addicted to the pooter. I appreciate yeah. that. Good. We just You're walk welcome. around with it. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, nice. Yep, got it here. That was a good one. I know. Jack's, Jack's I'm pooter is my goat boy. As much as Jack, and I'll speak for Jack, <laughs> as much as Jack knows that was a career maker and money maker, there's a part of him going, I do a lot more than I do. Well, we talked about that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Known for that. It's no yeah, different it's than people coming up and like, yeah. let me tell you something. The best thing he ever did. <laughs> right. I love what uh, you do, but the best thing you did was 30 years ago. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Jim Brewer, everybody. I'll make some noise for him. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for turning in. We'll see you guys next week. Yeah, good time. Good time.